Dum di dum di dum di dum di dum. Hey guys, this is Sasha from netbooknews.com. Did you ever wonder what's gonna happen if you're going to do a mashup of an Android smartphone and a netbook? So, especially an Acer netbook. You know what? That's what we're gonna unbox today. That's the new Acer Aspire One D255, which comes with an Intel Atom N450, Windows XP Home, and Android. I have no clue which Android version they're using right now, but uh, I guess we'll figure out. Uh, let me just fix this camera a little bit so you can see how I'm going to hurt myself with this big screwdriver here. So I just bought this device uh, in Taipei at the Digital Plaza for about 10,000 NTs. That is roughly around $289. Yeah, so pretty cheap netbook. And, uh, geez, it's kind of stuck in here. Finally, ta da da da! That's how the box looks like. I got a blue version of it. It comes with one gigabyte of memory, um, 160 gigabyte hard disk drive. And as I said, Windows XP Home, that's the ultra-low-cost PC edition, which is, in my opinion, actually not getting shipped anymore, because Microsoft wants us to get this crappy Windows 7 starter right now, which I definitely hate. Sorry to say that, but that's, of course, only my personal opinion. Um, let's see. Gosh, I hate these boxes. Finally, um, 10.1 inch display, 1024 by 600 is the resolution, which is kind of predictable. And here we go. Woohoo! This is actually something that I really like about Acer netbooks. Um, they always have a little sleeve, always the same one actually. But, anyways, this is something that we just don't see anymore with all their competitors. So guys, you know, how about just investing 10 US cents in average to get a sleeve into this netbook box? And uh, what do we have here? Oh, look at this. It just tells us uh, how to unbox it, how to recharge it, and some basic steps how to switch on the system and how to turn off um, the wireless. So this is a kind of quick manual. Let's see over here we have the system itself, but let's take a closer look at the accessories before. Uh, here's the big manual and uh, a warranty passport. Now we have a little towel because this is going to be another little glossy device. So if you want to get rid of all your fingerprints, this should help. Oh, a tiny little, I would say, three cell battery with a capacity of 25 watt hours. That is um, barely above the capacity of my HTC Desire that you just saw at the beginning of this video. I'm just kidding, of course, it's a little bit more, but still. Um, don't expect too much battery life on this device. I mean, it, it just built super cheap and uh, I would guess with this battery, uh, with these components, we should get about hmm, four hours of battery life out of it, maximum. Here's the PSU and I wonder if they have also some adapters. Here we go. So I got this Taiwanese one or uh, also for US outlets. So yeah, that's a pretty much uh, no big surprises, but uh, let's take a look at the netbook finally. Because uh, mine came in a fancy color again. As you can see. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Here we go. So that's the blue version. And, oh wow, let's get rid of this. 
So um, this is something that Acer is doing uh, recently, getting this huge um, Acer Aspire 1 logo uh, on the lid. This is something that we've seen on the Acer Aspire 1 533 for the first time, while uh, the 532 is just sporting this Acer logo here. And uh, D2, no, actually that's a D150. I'm a kind of Acer collection over here. Just had the logo on uh, the bottom left side of the lid. Anyways, uh, first impression, it's super light and super thin. Um, let's take a quick look around the system. We have the Ethernet connector. Over here we have Kensington key lock. That's a USB 2.0. So no USB 3.0 here. And we have jacks for the microphone, the headset, 4-in-1 card reader, nothing on the front. And on this side we have uh, two more USB 2.0, VGA out, and the connector for your PSU. Anything that shows us that it might come with an optional 3G? Nope, not at all. So uh, let's get the battery in there. Here we go. still super slim because it's also a slim three cell battery. Low capacity means low or small form factor. Oh, there's a little Android buddy uh, already. Hey, thank you so much for getting this new sticker on here, Acer, you know, just to uh, waste a little bit more material. Uh, I, I bought it already, so I know it has Android. Um, Again, more plastic uh, stuff over here, and more plastic stuff over there. Uh, we have another huge sticker on the Acer over here, and that's it pretty much. Intel Atom and Windows XP Home sticker. So only four stickers and two protection stickers. Oh, sorry, yeah, four uh, for product stickers and two protection stickers. Um, that's not too bad for Acer. I think they are still topping it with the uh, 31TG that I unboxed and had about 10 stickers. Oh, wait, there's one on the back. A couple of them. Anyways, um, pretty much the same keyboard um, that we see on all the Acer netbooks so far. On, let's say, recently, because um, the last three models came out with this kind of chiclet keyboard. I think Acer has a specific name for it. It's not a real chiclet, it's any kind of special Acer uh, chiclet keyboard. Um, it looks good. Uh, I, I really like the. I really like that it's, <laughs> it's turning on already. Um, glossy, as I said, so this is a, a huge mirror. That's me. Hi, guys. And. Why is it not booting up Android right now? Anyways, let's switch that off, even though that shouldn't be too healthy for the system. Um, yeah, that's a pretty much kind of predictable design of the netbook and uh, nothing, nothing new. But as I said, there's Android on it and let's see how we can, how can, how we can boot this up. Yay, believe it or not, after tons of bloatware and crap that got installed on the system automatically without uh, me having the chance to stop this, I finally got to the Acer Configuration Manager for Android, uh, which is uh, quite a little challenge for me again, because as you can see, it's all in Chinese, but uh, I'm guessing that this is just an option menu if I want to boot with Android or Windows, and if I want to boot with Android, and uh, in the in the uh, option menu or in this boot menu, that after some 10 seconds, it would automatically switch to Windows. Let's hope that this is the right button here. And, oops, I want to get my name. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. I hope that works. And uh, I don't want that. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I guess that's it. And now we should be able to reboot the system and to see if Android works and especially what 
version of Android is running on this Acer Aspire 1D255. Hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Surprise, surprise. That looks good. I know this bot. And another big question will be what kind of language they are using. Here we go! That looks like Android. Fantastic! We made it! So yeah, let's see. Hmm, it's all a little bit slower. Oh no, here we go. Well, fantastic. I can't understand a word, but this should be settings. And uh, this should be the system information. And, oops. Okay, okay, okay. That's Google Legal. I got it. Hmm, I guess that's all what it says. Nope, guys, that's what it does. That's the only little system information I'm getting. <laughs> I'm not sure about an Android 1.06, but uh, there should be something that got customized for Acer. And maybe I can figure it out uh, how to set it up to English before I'm doing my detailed review. Oh, and over here I can just boot into Windows. Okay, first impression, something that I predicted means uh, that I was expecting. Um, an average Intel Atom Pineview netbook with a small three cell battery. So this, as I said, it will only run for three to four hours max and with a kind of customized Android on top of it, which is only useful, let's say, that, um, for surfing the internet. Because that's about it. You can't access the Android marketplace. You won't be able to download any apps uh, to use Android in a different way besides uh, having Google Talk on there or your browser. Besides that, it's a, it's, it's a neat looking uh, netbook, right? I really like the form factor of it. It's, it's super thin. If, if we compare this, let's say, to the 533, and you can see it's definitely a little bit slimmer than the 533. Besides that, it's pretty much the same design. Um, it is cheap. It has to be cheap because otherwise it just won't be competitive at all because who wants to buy um, an Android system or let's say an Android netbook that is actually only good for browsing the internet. In my opinion still, Android needs to be on devices like this, it means on a smartphone like this HTC Desire, that's where it works out. Android won't be a netbook operating system, uh, not now and not in the future. Anyways, I'm still going to check it out, hopefully can switch it over to English and then we see each other again uh, during my detailed review. This is Sasha for NetbookNews.com, thanks for watching.